Good morning everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. Today I am in my backyard and I'm sitting right here, right in front of this pot of snapdragons, simply because I just wanna show them off. They are looking so beautiful right now. I have another pot over there and I actually planted these snapdragons. They're just the generic like six pack snapdragons that you get from the garden center. And I planted them last November and then I wintered them over and I did dead, deadhead them a couple times and they are like two feet tall now. They are crazy and they are beautiful and I'm just enjoying them before I pull them. Um, I'm probably gonna transplant them into another area of my yard um, just because I think that they will continue to bloom, maybe, possibly, um, but I wanna enjoy them before I pull them out and put my summer annuals in. So just wanted to show that off. So then the other thing that I was looking at today, I was just kind of out here in the morning and dreaming and last week I did a video about my sunlight in a difficult area of like a difficult problem bed that I have um, it is a oh, what is this west facing garden bed um, <laughs> I always have to think about you know north south east west which way it's pointing but this is a west facing garden bed and it's actually underneath an oak tree let me turn around so that you guys can see it and part of the difficulty that I have with this garden bed is, um, you know, it, it's not, I mean, it technically is full sun. When I did the, uh, the little test for how much light it is, I did find that from about here over, it gets more than six hours of sun, but it really only gets the hot afternoon sun. So, you know, I have an ostrich fern right there that looks really beautiful right now, but by the dog days of summer, that ostrich fern is, it scorched and not happy and you know brown leaves and everything like that so I'm definitely gonna have to move that my biggest issue I have right now is this whole section this kind of blank section that I have right here when it gets really close to the fence it's almost all shade except for in right in the middle of summer when the Sun is directly up overhead this fence faces north so you know the sun is a little bit over you know lower in the sky over that way so it gets pretty much full shade for about two feet and then it starts getting some more hot afternoon sun as it comes out here so i've been having a little bit of difficulty with this garden bed just trying to decide what i want to plant there um when i come out of my back patio door and you know we're sitting on it under our pergolas on our on our couches this is kind of a big focal point right it's, it's something that's definitely we definitely see from all parts of our yard so it's I, I don't know I guess I feel kind of pressured to put something good in there um I you know I've had this patio set here but this is just an old patio set that I don't really care about um you know and I've asked you guys a couple times if you guys have any ideas and I'm still just debating it's just one of those places do you guys have places like that where you just you can't decide nothing like really clicks basically so I was talking about it to my friend Kim, who actually is a landscape designer and consultant in, um, I think it's Eastern North Carolina or Central North Carolina is what she said. Um, and she has a YouTube channel and she has an Instagram um, page and she gives really, really good tips about landscape designing. So I was talking to her about this problem bed and asked her if she would take a stab at it and just give me a couple of, um, you know, like ideas from a landscape consultant's point of view. I, now, I have never used a landscape consultant before. Uh, I even said to her, like, I don't even know what to tell you. I don't know what to, to I don't know what questions to ask you. Um, so she was really sweet about it. And she said, just show me the bed. You know, think of it like you're just having a conversation with me and tell me what you're thinking about for this bed. So great and I thought I asked her if I could film it for the channel and she said yes which is fantastic so thank you so much Kim so her uh, company is called the Southern Daisy and that's her Instagram channel and her YouTube channel as well um, and she's really really great she does you know commercial properties but she also does residential properties as well so I'm really excited just to see what um, you know what her point of view is for this again thank you Kim and then if I was just to talk to her her as if she was here I would kind of talk to her like I talked to you guys on the on you know as I'm talking to my camera um, and basically just say I want something beautiful I want something lush I really like that lush you know 
kind of what I'm going for here, like lots of plants. And then over on this side, lots of lush plants. I love this kind of look where it's, you know, it's like almost like a secret garden look kind of. Um, but part of the issue that I'm having with this garden bed is it's asymmetrical. I am really good at symmetry. I'm really good at um, balancing things on either side. I am not good when it's got, you know, this weird kind of swoopy triangle behind the lawn. Um, I just, I don't know where to put a focal point or anything like that, or even if I have to have a focal point. So let me flip the camera around and I'll go to the other side of the pool. Our pool pump is broken, so our pool's a little bit dirty right now. So <laughs> don't, don't look at the pool, but look at this garden bed uh, from the other side. So let me flip you guys around. All right, so I'm back on the other side of the pool and I'm over by our patio table where we eat dinners at during the summer. And you guys can see the garden bed I'm talking about is basically from that honeysuckle all the way around to these planters and topiaries that I have right there. And right along the fence, that's mostly shade because that's a north facing fence. But then over here, um, I'll link that video up above where I determined I came out every single hour and took a little video or a little picture just to see how much sun I had. And I definitely had six hours of sun even in the summer or in the spring. Um, and so as it gets closer to the summer, it's going to have even more sun. So it's kind of a weird little spot. It's like divided about half right there, sun and then shade all along this fence. So I am having trouble with this. So I really appreciate Kim, you know, chiming in and giving me her opinion on the matter. Um, I think it'll just be really, really helpful. Um, so you guys can see it's, it's a pretty prominent area in my yard and I just, I want to do something with it. I want to plant something with it. Um, I'm just kind of having like a brain fart, if I could say that, uh, with this bed. So, you know, suggestions are welcome. I would love to put raised beds here and have vegetables, but I just don't get enough sun. I don't think, I don't think the vegetables will be happy. Um, so speaking of vegetables, um, before I send it over to Kim, I wanted to give you guys an update of my kitchen garden and show you guys what it looks like. So I did this kitchen garden a little bit earlier this year. I installed this wattle fence uh, myself and I just foraged for these sticks. And when I say foraged, I mean I went to green waste piles and <laughs> grabbed them out. Um, but I have a couple things planted here. Some of them are doing really well and some of them are doing really poorly. I'll start with the ones doing really well. So <laughs> I have the Muncher cucumbers there. They're doing good. I have my soil thermometer in there just to make sure I was checking the soil temperature. I think I planted them a little bit too early um, because it was about 60 degrees when I first planted them. Now it's getting closer to 70 degrees soil temp. Um, so I think that they're okay now, but I think they were struggling a little bit. I have a fairy tale eggplant that my friend grew for me. I have a yellow squash. I have a black beauty zucchini. I have a green bell pepper. And this is a purple hyacinth bean that's starting to go crazy, really happy. Um, I just went to the store and I bought some thyme because I really like cooking with thyme. And then I bought some chives as well. I do have some um, proven winners, pesto, besto, basil that I'm growing and a bunch of tomatoes that are going to be ready to plant out very soon um, and then I have some parsley as well that I'm going to plant out. The things that did not work well, you guys probably can't even see them, I, this is total newbie, <laughs> I didn't know that birds eat lettuce. <laughs> so I had this heat tolerant lettuce, you guys can barely see them, they're like nubbins at this point. These are, these are weeds from the bird seed, but um, here's a nubbin, here's a nubbin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's ridiculous. They started off with the green. It, this was a heat tolerant mix from territorial seeds and they were growing really well. And I was really excited about them. And then all of a sudden, like the green ones, they started getting eaten back first. Like this one here started getting, you know, and I thought, Oh, what, you know, what kind of bug do I have? What's going on? And then I was sitting in my window and I was watching the birds eat the bird seed and then they jumped down here and they started picking out all the lettuce and I thought what <laughs> I just didn't know that birds like lettuce so I have to get one of those uh chicken wire cloche things um I just thought it's gonna get too hot here and there's no point to even uh purchase it now because by the time I get it in the mail it's gonna be too hot so lettuce was a failure <laughs> 
but that's all right. Uh, I'm gonna plant my tomatoes kind of right in this area. And then I have some dragon's tongue uh, bush beans. My, my girls helped me, so I'm gonna plant it right there. So that's okay, live and learn. I just, I literally had no idea, um, which I'm sure to some of you sounds crazy that I didn't know that, but I didn't know that. Um, we have a bird feeder right there that I am definitely going to move because they're making a mess and, um, it, I'm dealing with a ton of weeds in my, in my garden. So I got to move that. And then I have my tiny tomatoes right there. I'm just giving you guys a tour. <laughs> it's not time for a tour yet. <laughs> just real quick. So I have my tiny tomatoes right there. Those are looking really good. And then I have a bunch more seedlings that I'm hardening off. I have some zinnias um, and some snow on the mountain and some asters and ageratum, I think is how you say it. But those look really, really good. All right, I am sorry, I got distracted showing you guys my kitchen garden. So I'm gonna send the video over to uh, Central North Carolina to Kim, AKA the Southern Daisy, and she hopefully she can help me and ha give me a couple ideas of something that I can do for this challenge of a garden bed. So thank you so much, Kim. Hi, Janie. Thank you so much for asking me your question and for trusting me with giving you some suggestions and some ideas. Disclaimer to my suggestions, um, I am in zone 7B and so I don't know the plants for zone 9B other than what I have looked at. Um, and so the suggestions that I make today may not fit your area, but maybe you could find something similar. Um, so I am actually at my favorite nursery and I thought it would be really fun to take you around and show you some ideas that I had. Um, and so what I want to bring up to you first is let's think about your um, corner and how we can brighten it up. So the first point of interest that I want to talk about is the tree that you have growing behind your fence. Um, and so that makes me sort of want to pause and think about planting because your tree roots go out as wide as the canopy is um, for your tree. And so, you know, when you go and start planting on top of those tree roots, you take the risk of damaging it. Um, and so my first thought was, how about a retaining wall? You would have your elevated bed and that would provide a really cool interest as you walk out of your um, door and look across your pool into this corner. I was thinking, you know, that would be really cool to have a multi-level planting. Um, and also it would elevate um, above the tree roots so you're planting actually in the planter. Um, so that's sort of what I had in mind. Now, when you go to start building a wall, you know, there's a chance you're also going to disturb those tree roots. So without being able to be there and see that in person, you know, that may not be a feasible idea. But if we went with that, I would think, you know, doing some multi-level plantings would be really nice. And it would take away from that long um, stretch of fence that you have that you want to break up. The second point of that is that you know, we're going to have to, because your bed is unique, it's not unique to me um, because I am used to dealing with multi um, sunlight exposure beds. And so um, what I want to say to you is let's play to that. There are several plants that you can sort of put outside its comfort zone and plant and, you know, it may struggle a little bit at first, but then they acclimate to it. Um, so something I was thinking about would be planting something that can tolerate both sun and shade. Um, and so that's my idea for you. Um, and so if we think about planting, um, we want to think about a retaining wall maybe with some even some up lights um, shining on that wall. And uh, it doesn't have to be very tall. Matter of fact, I'm sitting on a wall. Let me show you right now. So even something like this, just a low wall, and then having having plants above and then plants in front of it. Um, this is, actually I'm at the nursery, so this is not the best idea to show you, but um, I think you get the idea of what I'm saying. So when I think of California, I think of tropical. Um, I don't know if that's right, I don't know if that's wrong, um, but I also had an idea, because you have a pool 
why not do a water feature in that corner? I can see it, I can visualize it. I think it would be absolutely stunning. Let me show you the type that I'm talking about. They actually have one here at the nursery. So I'm gonna take you over and show you sort of what, what it is that I'm talking about. Okay, something like this, like a tiered waterfall, but high. This one goes all the way up. Um, I know this is great and big and lofty, but you ask for suggestions and here you have it. <laughs> um, so you could do some plantings around your water feature. Let me walk over here, to show you the other level. Okay, so you can kind of see how it winds around and then has a big pool in the bottom. I don't know if this is something you could do in your area. Um, they also have lights in here that at night it lights it up, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I thought it would be a really cool idea to show you some plants that I think would be a great idea and then talk through them. Um, and so I'm gonna go walk around and I'm gonna show you some inspiration and some ideas. Okay, so again, we are going to remember that I am in zone 7B and you are in zone 9B. And so the plant selection is a little different, but let's look at our first plant, which is a camellia. Camellias are very versatile. They do well in the full sun. They do well in the full shade. This is the type plant that I feel like it could be your focal point. This could be a backdrop. This could serve so many purposes, but a camellia was my first stop. What do you think? I also love the idea of this chartreuse color against your fence and under that shade of the tree, I feel like would be a fantastic look and pop. I don't know if you can do spirea in your area, um, but spirea are a great option. Here is my next suggestion. This is a Laura Pedlum. I would highly recommend this against your fence and then put with the kaleidoscope abelia. But look at the color combination. Do you see how the purple plum color and the chartreuse color pop? This, when you walk out your door and are looking across your pool, would be amazing. So, love that idea. Have you thought about a Japanese maple? There are many different kinds. There are weeping lace leaf. There are your regular red rubrum. Um, there are some, let me show you some over here. Here are some other options. This is a lace leaf, Japanese maple. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, again, this bright green, this might be a better option to pop against your fence. Um, and you could get a weeping variety so it's not growing up into your tree. But I love the lime color of these leaves. And this is a fern leaf, full moon maple, gorgeous. So I don't know if Japanese maples do well in your area, but let me look. See, I know you are zone 9B. Uh, five to eight. So maybe there are some Japanese maples that do well. I love this red bark maple. Gorgeous. Again, that pop of color. This color is great when you are looking to brighten up a corner. Um, they put on a show all their own. So I don't know if there's a Japanese maple that would do well in your area, but if there is, that would be my recommendation for you. So an option for a ground cover would be this Persian Shield. Again, not sure about in your area, but here it takes off and is gorgeous. Um, and it spreads nicely. So here is an option for a ground cover or a planting is a sub shrub in front of whatever you plant um, but love that color and it looks really nice against a bright pop of green like you can see so that's an option something else i was thinking of i know you have ferns i've noticed in some of your videos um the kimberly queen fern really put on a show and are nice in front uh as a border um they stand up really tall so that would be a good option or a Boston fern. See how that sort of just creates a nice planting and the colors are bright. Um, so I'm, as you can see, I'm trying to brighten up that corner um, by adding some contrasting greens and plums. Just my idea, but just my opinion as well. You could also go with a Carax or a Liriope. Not sure how those do as well. 
I am home now. I wanted to get away from the noises of the garden center. Although it is great, it's not great for making a video. And so I wanted to recap a couple of things that we talked about and bring everything home so that I can send it back over to you. Um, you know, this is a little bit different than my normal consultation or my normal first visit um, where I'm not able to ask you questions back and forth, which is okay. I like what we're doing here. Um, and I hope this is helpful for you. But um, what I want us to first think about is the tree, the canopy. The roots are as wide as the canopy. So do you have surface roots? Um, if I were there, I would be able to take a look at it and, you know, and give a better idea. But in, in doing it the way that we're doing it, think through, you know, do you have surface roots? Could you get away with a retaining wall? Um, you know, a multi-level planting is always nice for the eye. I'm not talking about a big um, retaining wall, maybe a foot to a foot and a half tall. Um, and, you know, you could do a couple of different level layers of plants. Um, I know you mentioned maybe even doing some vegetables and herbs over in that area, and I don't see why you couldn't incorporate that into what we're doing anyway. Um, just an idea. Some food for thought. Um, so thinking through maybe a multi-level, uh, doing a retaining wall. Um, when I look at that corner, I think, you know, we really want to make it pop, whatever it is, because that's a focal point from you, where you're sitting under your pergola with your couches. Um, when you're in the pool, that area draws your eye. And while you have a seating area there, you said it really wasn't necessary. So, I think either doing a multi-level planting with some colors that are bright and vibrant. Um, I really love the plum color and the chartreuse color, whites and hot pinks. Um, they draw your eye in. And so that's a good look for that corner. Also, the, um, the idea of doing a water feature, you know, I know that's a little exuberant, but you know, it's okay. Um, you can think big, you know, that's something that I could picture being really beautiful, not only visually, but by, you know, the sounds that the water feature would make. Um, so that's an idea. Another idea would be to, you know, to really think about having one, a uh, the type plant that could handle both sun and shade. Um, you know, it's not ideal to do something like that. So something I wanted, a point that I wanted to bring to you would be to, you know, find plants and, and plant in groupings for the sunlight requirements. And what I mean by that is in the area that's shaded um, most of the day where it's the longer side of the fence, make that its own planting. Then the area that is shade and then has the hot, hot sun in the afternoon, have that be a planting. But as you're thinking through picking out the plants, find the similarities, find something that has similar leaves or the similar color of the leaves or the similar bloom. Um, you know, the the camellia is one that I really thought would be versatile. The loripedlum is another one. Um, it may not grow as big, but you know, that's an option. Um, if you don't wanna do that and you wanna have something that is going to be, there's a car going backwards. <laughs> Um, I'm sitting in the car rider line, so sorry about that. Um, anyway, so you could have similar plants with the similar leaf structure, similar leaf color, similar bloom, um, and sort of create, you know, when you think of designing outdoors, a lot of times you hear the word using rooms, creating outdoor rooms and spaces. And so you may have a vegetable room. You may have a seated, comfy, cozy room. You may have a cottage room. So you could, you could create two different spaces, but have something that ties them together in similar color patterns and palettes. Um, and so I hope that is helpful for you. Um, you know, and I would love if you want to do a part two to this and you want to give me your response back, I would love to answer, you know, and go more in depth with this. Um, and, you know, see what you think about that. So anyway, thank you again so much for help for asking my opinion. Thank you for reaching out. Um, and I look forward to seeing what comes out of this and being along for the ride with you. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a fantastic day, my friend.
Bye. Kim, I love those ideas. I, now that you say that this needs some elevation right here, that's all I can see that this bed needs. I think it would look amazing if, you know, it was kind of like a step down, just like you were saying. I think that that is a perfect, perfect idea. And I really, really appreciate you taking a look at my challenge of a garden bed. <laughs> I also love camellias. So if you think camellias will do great in that spot, they're going in there so i really appreciate you taking the time to take a look at my challenging garden bed and i hope all of you watching this found that interesting if you did check out kim's channel the southern daisy she's on youtube and instagram and i hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today